Homeopathic medicines are non-toxic. There are no side effects when they're used properly. They're affordable. A single remedy costs around six, eight dollars and lasts a lifetime. Um, the single remedies in kits, of course, go down to like two dollars a bottle. They're, they're super um, affordable way of, um, you know, using homeopathic medicines at home. And they're eco-friendly. One vial of a remedy can medicate hundreds of thousands of pills or tablets. And this ensures that the planet's precious resources are preserved and there's no waste. Well, I say no waste. There's a water, a little bit of water is used and a bit of alcohol. But the final medicine, the active ingredients last indefinitely. I have remedies in my medicine chest that were made over a hundred years ago and they're still working just well. The FDA is required to put, put a sell-by date or the FDA required the homeopathic pharmacist to put a, an expiry date on all the medicines, but you can safely ignore that. Farmers and veterinarians, especially in England, are at the forefront of using homeopathy in dairy herds. Homeopathic medicines are have replaced antibiotics to prevent and treat mastitis. This is a huge saving to the farmer and of course there's no antibiotics in the milk. Fabulous. Acute homeopathy can safely and easily be learned at home for a variety of complaints. Um, the more you know, the more you can do. But um, chronic complaints are complex and always need a trained homeopath. I, people often ask me how about using homeopathy and acupuncture together and the problem is they're, they're both big energy systems of healing and I advise unless people are very very sick it's usually best to choose one or the other. Um, the acupuncturist um, an acupuncturist who uses the pulses, takes the pulses of patients, um, will sometimes balance out the pulses, the energy of a person who's, um, who's had a, who's, who has had a really good remedy and their energy is in the process of healing and reforming and you can stop that healing process that's been initiated by a homeopathic medicine, that healing process can be stopped with um, an acupuncture treatment, and that's a shame. Um, what can homeopathy treat? I mean, it can treat any complaint. I mean, it can't heal, a, it can't treat a broken bone, but it can speed the healing of it. I broke my arm um, in, um, in the spring, and I... I mean, I'm an, I'm older now, I'm in my 60s, and it just took three weeks to uh, heal the pain. I never ha had to take one painkiller, so it will help people. It alleviates suffering while people are healing, while, you know, the operations, before and after operations, spectacularly helpful. Um, if something is broken beyond repair, you cannot mend a severed tendon. You know, you need surgical intervention for that. And sometimes this is information is lost in time. If patients come to me, they've been sick for 20, 30 years or more, and and it dates back to childhood and they don't remember exactly what was happening when it started. That information Sometimes I get it eventually, and it's key for their, um, for their, for me to be able to choose the best remedy. So if information is lost in time, we we do our best, but the healing can't go as deeply as maybe we would want it to. If people are in a situation where they're under severe stress, like um you know, an abusive relationship where they're being, um, you know, if that is ongoing, then homeopathy is limited. That person needs a tremendous more support therapy rather than homeopathy.
to in the first instance. Homeopathy is not herbs, it's not aromatherapy, people often ask me, it's not anywhere near any of these things, it's not bark flower remedies, although bark flowers are energy, little energy medicines, they're not succussed, they're not diluted, they're made in a completely different way, aromatherapy is oils, it's not vaccination, it's not va faith healing, they're not placebo, though the placebo effect might, might enter into it, it doesn't last very long. It's not safe per se, and it's not a cure-all. So herbs are um, concerned, this is plant medicine, earth medicine, and the remedies are used in a material dose as tinctures or teas. Um, and homeopathy is a baby, only 200 years old instead of thousands of years old. So herbs is the administration of herbs is on the known, their known sphere of action. Vaccinations stimulate the immune system directly to produce specific responses. It's as if that person had contracted a particular disease and um, they're introduced directly into the bloodstream, thereby bypassing the body's natural defense system. So this is very different from a homeopathic medicine that stimulates the body um, generally to and energetically. It's not a physical response. Because homeopathy can cure dramatically in some cases, can, can have a healing response if you like, it can also cause some harm. If you take a homeopathic medicine repeatedly, if you take too many over usually a long period of time, it's possible to overstimulate and even to develop the symptoms that the remedy is supposed to help with. Um, you know, if you, Nux Vomica, this was my first when my first year in practice, I had a patient call and say she'd been taking Nux Vomica for two months. Um, for um, a yeast infection, uh, a, a bad yeast infection, and because it had helped in the first week or two, she carried on taking it and then started to get worse, but because it had helped, e even though she started getting a bit worse, she took it for another month because the pharmacy she went to told her to. That they had been badly um, you know, they, they badly counseled, counseled her very badly. And now she couldn't sleep and she was irritable all the time, which are the key symptoms for this little remedy. I told her to go out and get some black coffee and some Vicks Vapor Rub to try and counteract the effects of the Nux Vomica because those are known antidotes for this remedy. And by the next morning, virtually all the symptoms, what we call the proving or testing symptoms from having taken it too long, had gone. But she really suffered. It's not placebo, really. You don't, it'll either work or it won't. You don't need to believe in it. And anyone who's experienced relief of, for an injury or a middle ear infection will you know, will attest to this. Um, anyone who's had one, two, or more, many more remedies not work be before one did will attest to it doubly. And, um, you know, because homeopathic remedies don't always work, um, doesn't mean that homeopathy is ineffective. Uh, conventional medicines do not always work and that doesn't stop people from taking more of them. So there's a sort of double bind that homeopathic medicines are, somehow have to prove themselves with one remedy. And if, if our remedies do work, it's attributed to the placebo effect. That's not fair. <laughs> so there are N number one remedies for certain complaints. Rust talk is the number one remedy for rheumatism, but doesn't work for all patients with arthritis or rheumatism. It'll work for maybe 40%, that's all. 
chamomilla is the number one remedy for teething, babies. It is the no but it will only work for about 50% of them. I mean, work really well. And so it's it's the remedy that's in all the teething tablets on the shelves, nearly all of them. But if your baby isn't teething in the chamomilla way, if she if she or he doesn't have chamomilla symptoms, it's not going to help. So until recently, you know, homeopaths have kind of said, well, it works. We we don't care how. We know it does, and um, our patients are happy, and we're happy, and um, let's just get on with the business of alleviating suffering. Um, you know, science right now, the researchers are on the brink of being able to define, explain, and examine what is in a homeopathic medicine and the mechanism of healing by and um, the researchers think it's in in the field of nanoparticles so we're all watching that very carefully here here's um here are a few links for you i i've wrote written an, a, a brief article that touches on some of the contemporary theories the um, water, the water theories around that could be, possibly explain homeopathy. Nancy Malik has produced an, inc I mean, I think there are 500 studies in her paper, um, and they've been classified, catalogued according to whether they're clinical, um, double blinded trials, reviews, meta analyses, and so on. If you want to see, an exhaustive list. She's the best place to go. That's historical list, everything. Dana Allman is at the forefront of, he's written a, an ebook on research in homeopathy and his work, website publishes all the latest research studies. So today, pediatrics, I'm going to talk about 10, you're going to learn 10 remedies, a small selection of big remedies for common complaints in children. And it's good to start small if you're new to homeopathy. You can only go up. So here are the snapshots of the remedies. Aconite. This is the remedy to give at the very first sign of an acute illness, within the first 24 hours. Um, arnica. Nearly everybody's heard of Arnica. It's the one remedy every parent should carry for injuries and bruises. Belladonna is for high fevers with no sweat or thirst. So, you know, and as we go through, um, these snapshots are what you want to remember, memorize if you like, and they'll expand um, into slightly larger pictures, and then you'll go to the books for the bigger pictures. So Belladonna's for any complaint with a high fever, no, no sweat, no thirst. Calcarea carbonicum is for teething. It's for slow, delayed teething. Chamomilla is, like I said, um, is for the number one teething remedy, but its keynote is unbearable pain. I mean, this is the worst pain. So if the baby's sleeping at night, then chamomilla is not their remedy. Hepar sulf is for infections or acute illnesses that have an infective component. Calimur is for simple coughs and colds. It's a great remedy to give if you don't know what else to give. Mercurius is for, um, takes the hepar sulf situation. It takes it one step further or deeper. It's for much more serious sinuses, coughs and colds, where everything's smelly. That's the keynote. Pulsatilla is for coughs, colds, all kinds of acute complaints in children um, where there is a bigger picture. And I'll, I'll describe it in a bit. Silica is for lingering colds or coughs. It's for the end of an acute illness where there's still, you know, the, the vit vital force is just lagging behind, lingering, malingering. 
So, number one, aconite is the number one remedy for shock. Arnica is the number one remedy for injuries. Belladonna is number one for fevers. Calcarea carbonica, number one for slow teething. Chamomilla for painful teething. Hepasulf for infections. Calimere for simple colds. It's Calimere is also the number one for clearing for the eustachian tubes, for the snap, crackle, and pops that occur in people's um, ears after a cold. Or, you, you know, children appear not to be able to hear because they're all blocked up in there. Mercurius is the number one remedy for canker sores, for mouth ulcers, um, I, and for smelly anything, but also for sinus complaints. Pulsatilla is the clingiest remedy. The num and so a lot of children go through clingy phases. They, they don't need pulsatilla their whole childhood, but every, almost every child I know needs either pulsatilla or calcarea carbonicum at some point in their growing up. And silica is for the convalescent stage of a cold. Okay, so memorize the snapshots. As you use them, you will remember them. They become like friends to you. You never forget a remedy you give that worked. Look up the bigger pictures before you give it to make sure that you're giving a good remedy. Think three-legged stool. That means you want one good physical complaint, a general complaint, and maybe something else, mental and emotional, and then you will know that that remedy will work, will help. Ask questions if you don't have enough information. Compare similar remedies to make sure that you're choosing the next one. And if you can't choose, just give the best one or the most obvious. And if it doesn't work, quickly work, you can move on to the next or get help. There's tons of help now on, online. So let's go um, look at them in a little bit more depth now. Aconite. This is... Um, in an acute illness, you're going to give this remedy in the first 24 hours. After that, you need another remedy. Um, the symptoms come on suddenly. Maybe your child had a shock during the day or got chilled, you know, in the cold, in the wind, in the pool, at the beach, doesn't matter where it happened. And they go to bed, fine, wake up around midnight, one o'clock in the morning, and they're sick, they've got a fever. They're very thirsty, they're very restless, they've got burning thirst. And they may say crazy stuff. That, and the, the thing that they say, and they say it quite often, and parents just sort of laugh it off or ignore it, I'm going to die, I, or I dreamt I was going to die, or... Um, I'm, I, I'm really scared, I'm really scared. You know, there's a sort of fear component there. They're anxious and restless and you can't be calmed. And they're, they, they're better if they can get a bit of fresh air. That often you can't get that symptom in the middle of the night. But that sudden onset after a shock or getting chilled and the restless fear doesn't matter whether it's a cold or an earache or a cough, or croup, especially croup, um, aconite will alleviate, will help the body to heal, and it'll sometimes, it's all it's need, it, it, it will be all, all that child needs, they'll wake up in the morning um, completely healed. So, croup especially is a, a frightening cough, frightening to hear, and it's, um, uh, this remedy should be, be in every medicine cabinet. Okay, Arnica should be in every pocket because this is the one, one that convinces people who, who don't know about homeopathy that it works. When you've seen a tablet of Arnica um, get rid, I don't know how to say, get rid of, you know, when the children fall, the little babies, the toddlers, they fall on their heads and they get a big swelling and they're all upset. If you give them a, a tablet of Arnica, 6C is fine. Uh, 
that point the crying stops because the pain is gone it helps to heal the pain immediately and within a few minutes the swelling goes down you know this is a small miracle because ordinarily that swelling would stay for a day or two or longer and go through every color of the rainbow so in older children who can talk to you they say it feels sore the pains are typically sore and bruised and the, they don't want to be in their bed it feels hard because their bodies feel sore and bruised and they're much worse for touch so the, there's a strange emotional picture um, where people who've had an injury say I'm okay or shock they'll say I'm okay don't touch me or I'm okay I'll be fine and they carry on and um, you know Annika is the number one remedy where there's a sort of delayed shock component um, any illness where people are suffering from sore bruised pains that are worse for touch where their bed feels hard like flu can happen in a flu or a cold Annika's your remedy <laughs>